So, hello everybody. Welcome to a new Mixed with Daniel episode with me, Daniel Detweiler. This time it's a question and answer episode because I got in a lot of questions. Stay tuned. You're often using a TMEQ to manufacture base energy in your mixes. You say that there is no equivalent plugin that can have the same effect. I found that to be true. You can boost using a Pultec emulation, for example, but the low end always seems to soften up. Is this because plugin emulations of EQs don't get the saturation quite right? Mm -hmm. Is one way to overcome this by using a combination of low end saturation, like with Waves R base plug? Uh, plus an EQ? Yeah, that's a tough question. So, um, yeah, I have a Tube Master EQ by Fairman, and that's just even a better EQ than most other EQs I have. And if I give some bass with that EQ, but that's also true for highs or for mids, by the way, but it's just so natural and we just get more energy with that thing. And uh, I never ever found something similar in a plugin. Never, ever. But again, maybe I should repeat this. This is not a mistake by the plugins. We should also not expect it from the plugins. Actually, have you ever heard a classical piano concerto with orchestra and the piano player would have played on a sampling piano? What? But if digital emulation was good, why would we not see this? Because an orchestra on stage, a conductor and a grand piano, it all takes up too much place. And the grand piano usually is where the conductor is and then the conductor has no place. It's, it's always a problem. If digital recreation of something was actually really possible, we would see at least some concerts with a digital piano, but we don't. Why? Because it's something different if you play on a real instrument. To me, with mixing, it's very much the same. As a mixer, I see myself as like an additional musician in the band, and I try to do something that the emotions of the song comes out of the loudspeakers, which it wouldn't if it would not be mixed good, and that the communication to the normal, normal listeners are really working well, and if I use real hardware gear, it's just way more easy. And there is a living quality and the emotional quality that you would not find in a plugin. Fair enough, the plugins are also much cheaper. If you work totally in the box, that's totally fine. But then the emotion, the musical quality needs to come from the microphone or from the recording stage. However, nowadays, as you know, very often tracks are recorded in the band room. Well, no quality there. Then they're mixed in the box, no quality there. And then it kind of gets difficult. Where should the quality then come from? Mastering would be the last stage. So uh, one of the reasons I think why we cannot really emulate every aspect of a great sounding equalizer is that an equalizer or every analog tool is working with the real current. Meaning that if we boost bass frequencies and if we go to measure the power of in this bass frequency after the boost and before the boost, we will well measure uh, some more power more easily. So what we want to give more power is actually what we get in the analog. Well, now if you are in a computer, we don't have a current anymore. What we have now is like information but no energy. We just have zeros and one in a computer. Now, how should the computer change this signal so that we, while listening to the new signal, really would think we have more energy now? But the computer does not know what energy is. And in the sample, again, there is no energy anymore. So I think if we are in a computer, we cannot really give energy to a signal anymore, maybe up to one dB. But I think you all know if you give about 10 dB boost, no matter at which frequency, it is not sounding good. If you give 10 dB boost in the highs, 
you might have ten dB more kind of, but it's also sounding harsh and ugly, and it's not really sounding like the musician would have brought this more energy. Uh, to the music. The same with the bass, with the analog EQ, you're, it sounds like you just would have had a way bigger and way more powerful bass amp. In the computer, you just get somehow these frequencies, but it doesn't sound good. Actually, it would sound better if you just would not EQ it. So basically, I think there are some things that if you have a real current, it's just way more easy to do so or to do things. The same goes for compression, it's just way more easy. And the last thing you said, yes, and it's about harmonic distortion, but this just happens if you push the signals to the limit of the gear. If you push it just right to the limit, but not too much to the limit, you have the greatest sound ever because you get distortion, but the distortion is depending on the music you send in. Sometimes you can push it even a little bit harder on some music not, but it's kind of reacting to the music. In the plugin, well, um, you would just have the real compressor and you measure it and you send something in and you basically get a very easy picture of how the distortion is. And then this thing is always applied in the plugin to every music that you uh, put in. It's always sounding the same. There is no life, there is no living quality, and there is no chaos. And there is no randomness in the plugins. It's just always the same. And if you push the plugin towards the boundaries, it, it doesn't sound good. It, it sounds like very strange to my ears. So I think this little distortion that you get on a real analog outboard, this is so difficult to emulate. You can make it very easy. Just take a saturation plugin, it doesn't matter which one, and saturate it too much. And then do the same with the analog gear, saturate it too much. And then you see that this saturation or distortion, that's a huge difference. It's plastic in the plugin and it's real interesting in the analog outboard. So I think those are all the differences. And no, I would not use a, a distortion plugin after, a, after pushing the bases uh, with a digital EQ. I think this just makes it worse. I think if you work in the box, you just have to accept you cannot do what you could do with analog gear. And it's also vice versa. Let's say this very clear. You can also do a lot of things in the box that you could not do on analog. You can automate every parameter. This is usually what I use. I totally love this automation that you can do with the plugins. This is great. I think if you make if you mix in the box, you just need to make something that is great in the box. You could use more delay plugins or more special plugins that do something that you can only do in digital. Or you could use SOOF, which is a plugin that reduces harshness. This is not possible analog. So actually, rather than increasing bass energy, because why would you increase bass energy? Well, because you don't have enough bass is one thing, but maybe you also have too much harshness. So you want to boost uh, in the deeper frequencies, but maybe with SOOF you could just reduce harshness and then you might also be there. Uh, usually in digital, what works good with the EQs is if you cut frequencies away. This is where I actually prefer the digital plugin equalizers, but I don't prefer them if you have to boost. Okay, long answer for a good question. Next question.